UM student Haley Schrinrein plays the saxophone and says when she stopped vaping, she was able to breathe easier. But when I stopped, um, I could play and practice way, way longer. Jaden Stroh, who was also a UM student, started vaping in high school but quit after hearing the news about the vaping illnesses. And I was just like, you know, all these people are getting pretty sick and my asthma doesn't help that at all, so I might as well just kind of stop. It wasn't too difficult. But she says the ban of these products is not a smart move. People are going to go around it. Tobacco sales are going to, like, rise and... People are going to start picking up cigarettes and tobacco, and I think that's actually worse. But UM research clinical scientist Paul Smith says the restriction is the right decision. Governor Bullock's ban on flavored vaping products, I think, is, um, to put it lightly, almost mandatory. Smith says the issue is how the industry is targeting the youth with the flavored products. It's been described as that. Uh, you can think of bringing a horse to water and making it drop or drink. So the advertising is bringing the horse to the water. The flavorings are making the horse drink. And Trinrine says that if you need another reason to stop, don't waste your money. <laughs> but Trinrine, Smith, and Stroh all say they are concerned about the effects that vaping will have on future generations. Reporting for UM News, I'm Tessa Nato.